Welcome parents to our year four maths workshop. The three aims of today are to understand the expected level of mathematics, to know how we cover objectives in school, and understand how to support your child at home with their maths. The first thing to talk about is place value. This is an absolutely vital part of mathematics. If the children understand their place value exactly, they know their thousands, hundreds, tens, ones, all the other place values, they know exactly how this links to everything, then they're really going to make progress in maths. When they struggle with this area, then new concepts can become quite tricky. That's why there's been a huge push at Highwood to improve our place value. The children will use a vocabulary a lot, we'll have displays up with our place value on them, and everything we do will link back to place value. The first operation we're going to look at today is addition. Now we teach addition and the other four operations using concrete, pictorial and abstract methods. So concrete would be, as you can see here, we'd actually get the physical resources out and we move the place value counters around when we're adding. Pictorial would be we would take away those place value counters and then the children have to represent it using a picture, but still only representing it using pictures. And then the last bit would be the abstract method. You can see that on the far right hand side, that is your written methods. Obviously at this point, there's no pictures. There is no concrete resources. This is where we're aiming for the children to get to, but they're gonna to struggle to understand the abstract if they haven't first gone through the concrete and pictorial. As well as that, when we look at things like adding, we always make sure we use a variation in styles of how we do it. Because obviously when the children come and experience addition in life when they get older, it's not gonna just be presented to them as a written uh, number problem. So as you can see there, we have things like word problems, part whole offers, bar models, written methods, pictures, all manner of different things. We make sure we use the vocabulary so that the children know exactly what they're talking about and they can really understand how to use addition. So for subtraction, we use exactly the same concrete, pictorial and abstract. And you can see how there we go from the place value counters to the drawing of the place value counters to moving up to the abstract method, very similar to the way we did addition. And again, like we did addition there, we can see we use a, uh, different variations in how we teach the fluency. So again, word problems, part holes, you can see there's some missing number problems at the end there. So this is still a way of teaching subtraction, but it's not just one way of teaching subtraction. So next one, multiplication, again, concrete, pictorial and abstract, moving from the place value resources all the way up to the written methods. And again, a variety of different ways and vocabulary that we present to the children so that they can fully master multiplication. And finally, of course, division, uh, where as you can see there, we will start the resources of sharing things out, and we will draw the resources of sharing, and then move to the kind of bar model at the end. It's important to note that in year four, we don't have to do written methods of division, so there'll be no bus stop methods here in year four. And again, we will present the children with lots of different ways of seeing division so that they get a good understanding of what it means. It won't just be a normal question and we will do lots and lots of different vocabulary so they really understand what division is. So a really big important part of maths again at Highwood is our mental arithmetic and times tables. We are having a huge push on mental maths and we will do lots of this throughout the week. Obviously we have the um, the times table check came up for our year four pupils in this year where there'll be lots of questions uh, linking to the one times table up to the 12 times table. So we'll have a huge push on helping our children to learn their times tables at school because it's really important that they pass this test. Um, we will also, of course, be doing other things as well as just times table, other kind of arithmetic work. At the moment, though, the big focus is going to be on times tables. So I want to have a look at what the expected standard for maths is. So I'm not going to sit there and read it. Um, as you can see, there's lots of information there about what the expected standards are. So the information on the screen shows you there's a, what an average year four child should be able to do before they enter year five. Now, this is the national curriculum, which you can find online. So if you're interested to see what it is that your child needs to achieve by the end of the year, then you can go look online and find all this information. Our aim as a school will be to make sure that all the children are an expected level, hopefully, by the end of year four in all of these areas. Anything that they are struggling with, we may need to go back and look at things from before, but this is what we're aiming to get all of the children to at least by the end of this year. So, a quick talk about our AET scheme. You may well have seen this in previous meetings, but the way it works is it goes through representation, fluency, probing questions, further extension, risks and sophisticated tasks. So the way it works is we start with representation. 
And our representation is where we will get physical resources out. That is where we will create things. We will, as you saw earlier, where we've got the place value counters for adding and subtracting, and we use physical resources. That's the representation stage. At this stage, there'll be a lot of teacher talking and children working in pairs to create different things. Then we move on to fluency. Fluency means this is where the children actually get a chance to have a go at the activities. This will be activities that I showed you before that will be linked purely to the learning of that lesson. So if we were adding together numbers, then the fluency would be lots of questions about adding numbers. After fluency comes probing questions. This is where we start to deepen the understanding of people's understanding. This is where they start to gain their mastery of, the math of mathematics. So here they will have questions where it's not just a simple calculation. There will be some calculating to do linked to the learning, but they will also have to articulate their understanding. They will have to solve a short problem here and explain their understanding. After that comes further extension. Now, further extension is where we would bring in more than one piece of learning. So if we were doing adding as our main learning, the question may involve adding and subtraction, or for example, maybe adding using room numerals if we've already covered those. So it means that the children have to not just use the current learning, but to use their previous learning, again, to build on that previous learning and help their mastery of maths. And finally, there are rich and sophisticated tasks. These rich and sophisticated tasks are the more complicated investigations. Not all the children will get onto further extension rich and sophisticated tasks, but this is where we're kind of aiming to get the children. Those rich and sophisticated tasks will be very complex problems where the children have to think carefully about how they're going to solve the problem, create their own strategies. This is not a simple how to do this calculation. This is where they have to think about and use their mathematical understanding. So this is a year overview of year four. You can see all the different units down the left hand side, how many hours we'll do to it and the summary of what's in there. We won't necessarily work through them in this order. Some things will get rearranged in a different order, but they will cover everything in here throughout the year. This will give you a rough idea as to what it is that your children are covering. This also ensures by using this overview that we are covering the entire national curriculum in a year. So let's have a look at the mastery flow in action. So the learning objective for this unit was to recognize the place value in a four digit unit. So the first thing the children would do with the representation, or as we call it in class, the show. As you can see here, in order to find the value of the underlying digits, the children have used a place value grid and they put the counters down to build the number and then they found the correct place value and they've counted the number of counters in there. This is so they have a good, solid, concrete understanding of what the place value means. This moves on to the do or the varied fluency questions. Here the children are presented with the basic calculations to do with place value. They're all based around the same piece of learning, but they're represented in different ways. This means that the children have a really good understanding of place value by the time they finish the do. The next one is the probing questions, or as we call it, the think. This is the point where we want to make sure every single child eventually makes it to this level, at least, because this is where they start to use their mastery and understanding of mathematics. As you can see here, there's a couple of questions that aren't just the basic questions. They ask true or false and things like that. Um, the children still have to use a calculation to work it out, but they would also be expected to explain their understanding. So the one on the right hand side, whether it says true or false, they couldn't just say it was true or false. They must give the reason why it is true or false with an explanation as to why they know that it is true or false, therefore using their full mathematical understanding. After that, we move on to the explore or the further extension questions. As I said, these are the ones where we bring in two different pieces of learning. So in this activity here, when we're still looking at place value, but we're also looking at addition and subtraction, which is a, a different piece of learning from previous, which they've already brought in. And we're also have to get a score between 1,000 and 2,000. So we're looking at that, not just place value, but whereabouts those other numbers linked to each other. So again, this is using the main understanding, but we're also bringing in other learning. So basic addition and subtraction and also comparing numbers. The final one would be a solve activity, as I said, which would be the rich and sophisticated tasks. So this is where we would be giving the children an investigation where they would have to develop a solution to the problem. And as you can see here, it's not that it has to be a very complex one, but it has to be that they have to think about how they're actually going to solve it. There is no just simple answer this and here's the answer. They've got to figure out the best way of doing it, how they're going to record the results, how they can determine that they have found the answer. So the whole point of all the mathematics, of course, is the end point, the end of Highwood when they year six take their SATS paper. 
So the first paper is the arithmetic paper. This is why we do lots of focus on our arithmetic throughout the years and a lot of focus on our um, place value. As you can see here is an example of the kind of question that year six would have to answer when they get to their SATS paper. They also have to do some reasoning papers. So again, here's an example of what a year six reasoning paper would be. And you can see how what we've built on in year four will lead to this. And here's another example of the type of questions that year six will be presented with when they do their SATS questions. OK, so how can you help at home? Well, the four operations in real world is really important. Obviously, the four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division are the bedrock of all mathematics. And the children, when they become older, will not be presented with a simple calculation to do. They will have to use it in the real world. So. When you're out shopping or you're buying things or you're creating a party or something like that, get your children to help with how they can use those four operations. Get them to do some mental math, get them to write it down and figure it out. The more maths they do in the real world, the more it will make sense to them and the more they're invested they will be in their maths. It's really important that they learn their number bonds all the way up to 100. I know a lot of the children will be able to calculate these, but they need to know them off the top of their head. So if we were to say 17 to them, they could instantly go, oh, you have to add 83 to it. Obviously, time saver was really important this year, and it'll be really important throughout their time at Highwood. So if you can help practice their times tables with them, all the way up to the 12 times 12 tables, they've got the time sale rock stars to help them. It's really important to remember with their times tables, it's not just a case of can they repeat their times tables? Can they do it out of order? Can they do the divisions as well as the uh, multiplications? There will at times be work put on mathematics. If that happens, a note will be sent home about it if you could do some work with them on mathematics. And a really important one, telling the time. Obviously, this is quite a tricky skill. It is one that is a huge life skill and the children will be using it throughout their lives. So the more work you can do with them in telling the time, the better, both analog and digital. On the school website, you can find the support booklet for year four. In this booklet, it will explain all the different methods we use in maths, Throughout the year, there's also a booklet for every other year group so you can see where they've come from in year three and whether they're heading for in year five and six. This would give you a bit of understanding as to how we're going to teach mathematics throughout the school. Thank you for attending our workshop. I hope that answers any questions you have. If you still have any questions, please feel free to contact your child's uh, teacher. Thank you.